You might not be able to get your hands on a PlayStation 5, but how about a PlayStation 5 controller and an Apple TV? What's up? This is EasyOSX, and today I'm going to be showing you how to connect a PlayStation 5 DualSense controller to your Apple TV. Okay, yeah, let's be real. Even the most hardcore of Apple fans know the Apple TV and the PS5 are two entirely different beasts. But the Apple TV does have some gaming capabilities, whether you're playing something in Apple Arcade, a native Apple TV game, or even just using it with Steam Link. And it's going to be a lot easier to play with a controller than the Apple TV remote. Even the new Siri remote. Sorry, Apple. But it was kind of Apple to put native PS5 controller support into its devices. But enough beating around the bush, let's talk about how to connect this controller up. First things first, you need to be running tvOS version 14.5 or later. Anything earlier won't have that support baked in. To check what version you're running, open the Apple TV Settings app, select General, then select About. In the middle of the page will be a section labeled tvOS, which will tell you what version you're running. You can ignore the parentheses. If you're running something older than 14.5, then go back to the main level of the Settings app, Scroll down and select System, then select Software Updates, then hit Update Software. This will check to make sure you're on the latest version and start downloading and installing the update if you're not already. Once you've confirmed you've got the latest version of tvOS, it's time to connect. Open up the Settings app and select Remotes and Devices, then select Bluetooth since that's what the PS5 controller uses. There is a nice little section at the top telling you how to connect the controllers if you need them, but you're watching this video, so I'll show you instead. Locate the PlayStation logo in between the two thumbsticks and the Create button near the top left hand side of the touchpad. Hold down on both of them at the same time for a few seconds until the lights on the touchpad begin to flash blue rapidly. The DualSense controller should appear under the Other Devices header on the Apple TV. Select it with your Apple remote and after a few seconds, the Apple TV should say that it has successfully connected to the controller. The controller may show orange lights on either side of the touchpad since it's not connected to a PS5, but that's okay. Now that it's connected, you can use the controller like your Apple remote. The D-pad and both thumbsticks will move around the interface. The X or cross button will act as the OK or confirm button, and the circle button will act as the back button. The square button can also act as an OK button. The triggers and bumpers, L1, L2, R1, and R2 if we're being technical, will act as left and right movements for getting around the interface, but will also let you fast forward and rewind in video apps like Netflix and YouTube. The touchpad in the center doesn't really do anything, nor does pressing into the thumbsticks. The triangle also doesn't seem to do much. Apple has included some other nice functions with this too. Go back to the remotes and devices section on the settings app, back into the Bluetooth section, and click on the DualSense controller. Here you can identify the controller, which will cause the controller to vibrate a few times. Helpful if you lose the remote. If you click on the customization section, you'll be able to change things such as enabling or disabling vibration, adjust saving of video clips using the share button, and remap buttons. That said, these remappings only apply to apps that support controllers, so I'm unable to map the touchpad as a trackpad-like controller for getting around the interface of the Apple TV. And if you need to, you can scroll to the bottom of this page and reset customization and everything will be set back to their defaults. Going back up one level, some apps will allow you their own customization through the Apple TV settings. Mostly remote play apps like Steam Link here. In this case, the customizations will only apply to the Steam Link app and the games you play there, but no other apps or games on the Apple TV itself. Lastly, you can disconnect the controller temporarily using the disconnect button if you want to take it to another device, but want to bring it back to the Apple TV later. Or you can have the TV forget the controller entirely using the forget this device button. Now at the end, let me show you a little bit of gameplay using the controller. In this case, I have the classic Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and a more modern game called Figment. Just gonna play a bit of each level just so you can see what it looks like. Note that these games come with support for controllers built in, meaning when you launch them, you can adjust the controller mappings for those games in their settings. All right, here we go. Starting with Emerald Hill Zone Act One. Classic, classic level. Take this moment to also show y'all that this button in the top right hand corner will act as the pause button for a lot of games. So just be aware of that. And 
I'm a great Sonic player, aren't I? I am an amazing Sonic player. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me three times, I'm just bad. And there we go. Alright, so... Act 1 of Emerald Hill Zone is done. So, we're gonna go ahead and jump over to... Pigment. I had to remember the name of the game. Alright, so now we're playing Figment, but I've already started playing a little bit, so uh, you're kind of jumping in in the latter point of the game, but that's okay. So this is more just to show you what the controller scheme is like. I've got like this for inventory, and I've got this for attack, and of course, classic dodge roll. Uh-oh. Let's find out. Oh, away! I'm not coming out with a plague man just down the road. Skin looks like they're getting kind of sick. You don't say. I'm not used to playing on a non-Nintendo controller, so forgive me for this. There we go. No way. I'm holding on to this. What the? Look out! Ew. There you go. There it is. Guardians of Key Breaks. Interesting. Oh, two batteries over here. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Was not intentional. I kind of need it. I have to save the world. Sorry. There we go. Red batter. by all this filthy gas. Missing its handle. Oh, let's get that straightened out. Uh... Holy moly! Teeth are falling out of the sky. I thought I overcame the fear of dentists right. a long time well. ago. I'm gonna put a pause here, just that way y'all know what Figment is like, so, and how they work on the controller. And that's how you connect a PS5 controller to your Apple TV. Thank you all so much for watching. If this video helped you out, then give it a like, it'll really help the channel out. Likewise, if you want more Mac, iOS, and other Apple tips, tricks, and advice, you can subscribe to the channel.
You can also check us out on the website easyosx.net as well as on our social media pages. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.